Uh, it's uh, good to continue the conversation here. I'm sitting with John Dupuy, uh, author and founder of Integral Recovery uh, as a as a, a new movement. Uh, I love how you talk about it. it's it's holistic a holistic approach with a map. Yeah. John, we had lunch and we talked about this a bit over lunch. What differentiates Integral Recovery as a model? from all the other models that are out there, and I know there's a lot of different answers, but I liked your answer at lunchtime, and I wonder if you might uh, amplify that just for a few minutes here right now to talk about it. Great, thanks mm -hmm. for asking. Mm -hmm. Integral recovery um, is a practice, and uh, the map supplied, uh, Ken Wilber one time said in a conversation that the map is psychoactive. In other words, if you get all these different parts, it just changes the way you observe and understand and, and interact with the world. That's very important. But where the rubber really meets the road are the practices, the integral, transformative, recovery life practices. And this is not just for your eight weeks in treatment or your six weeks or your 28 days or something. This is a lifetime commitment to ongoing practice. And the practices cover a strong body, healthy body, strong mind, intellect, uh, emotional health, and spiritual depth. And that is just not something you get by dumb luck or good genes or because you're born in the right place at the right time. That can all help, but it really has to be cultivated. And uh, it is, a, I, I am, somebody said he's not only the, uh, the, the thinker of this thing, but I'm the chief practitioner. And I try to base everything in the practice, in the practice, because I don't believe you can lead where you're not willing to go. And so I do, uh, my average practice is an hour of meditation a day, and I use brain entrainment, uh, technology that takes me into very deep meditative states. I've been doing it for approaching 10 years now, for a decade, and uh, it is, it's made all the difference. And uh, I, I knew something about meditation before I studied transpersonal psychology, and uh, I've always been very interested in the spiritual aspects, but it was more intellectual. Well, this has really grounded it. And in that interior practice, we deal and release somatically the trauma that we built up. It uh, increases our, our mental acuity. We have uh, greater cognitive function, creativity, connectedness. Uh, we can deal with uh, all our emotions, negative, positive, much more healthy ways. In other words, not clasping and grasping onto that. And um, a lifetime commitment to being a uh, athlete. In other words, at your, you know, work towards your being in the best, fittest shape uh, that you can be. And so you could be 85 or 90 years old, but if you've done the work, you've put in the time, it's going to be a vital 80 or 90, and you're still going to be in the game. And uh, you just have to uh, begin to make that axial. In other words, we don't do that too much. Now, the people that we really admire, say Michael Jordans or uh, um, uh, who's another, uh, Bruce Lee, Jimi Hendrix on the guitar, Eric Clapton, a hero of mine. Now, these people were fanatics about practice. And the old story was, oh, God, they're just so gifted. They're just so talented. Yeah, yeah, they are. However, all that gifting and talent does, would have been, gotten them nowhere if they hadn't put in the time the hour and hour of dedicated practice, showing up every day and pushing yourself just a little beyond your comfort zone. And this is not just my uh, experience, though it is. There's just a whole body of literature now that is developing about the, the benefits of practice and how practice you can achieve so much than you ever dreamed of uh, in whatever area that you're, that you're uh, emphasizing. And an integral recovery, we say healthy body, healthy mind, healthy emotions, and healthy spiritual life. And that's not just a good thought or a belief system, it's something you do daily. That's good, thank you. I, I wanna ask a, a question that's related to that in terms of practice. I know that you can expand on this, is that uh, I'm aware of, of uh, uh, certainly talk uh, and, and integrating the shadow and that that becomes part of the practice. I sure. wonder if you'd be willing to comment on that in the context of integral recovery. What does shadow work look like? Any comments at all? Yeah, well, well shadow is something that um, that is so painful that consciously, for some reason, we don't want to deal with it. Say we were abused as children or had something that happened in combat or we just grew up in an emotionally unsupportive kind of toxic environment in our family and it's very painful and perhaps at the time it's happening we don't have the resources or we don't have the capacity to know what to do with it so we we shut it off and it becomes shadow so we have the the part that we're aware of moment to moment our thoughts and what we're doing the world around us and we have all this shadow material that's not in the light of awareness that's doing all kinds of things 
okay, and then we're talking about uh, pathological shadow, and there's also a light shadow, but on, on the pathological side of the street, it can cause depression, it can cause uh, somatic problems, it can cause uh, addiction, cravings, uh, inappropriate sexual acting out, all sorts of things. And so, and often it's those shadow painful issues that we're avoiding that got us using and abusing in the first place that started the whole progression and the whole, the whole journey of, of addiction into the, into the pit. And so we have to be able to deal with that. And in the type of practice that we do, the, the, the meditation practice with the, this enhanced brain entrainment um, technology that we use, it has a remarkable capacity for integrating the mind, the heart, the body, and bringing up these, um, these uh, shadow issues, uh, both psychological, perhaps uh, conditioning, bad ideas we have about reality, ourselves, the nature of the world, others, and where we can actually allow them to come up do their thing, they, they uh, release uh, as bodily felt sensations. Often there's a whole story. We kind of bracket the stories because if we stay with the stories, uh, we get stuck in it. It's like the, the, the rat on the wheel just running around in circles. So we kind of, okay, thank you for sharing mine. And you stay with this and they release and we get through level and level and level of our own trauma. And so we're, we're, we're the, the, the our depressions begin to lift, the cravings lessen, uh, all that energy, it takes a lot of energy to keep these dragons in the basement. And so we don't have to keep them anymore. We come out, we've transmuted or trained them and released them. And now it's actually positive energy for our growth and health and happiness and creativity. That's great. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. Thank you.